Oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh, no. Oh, uh, excuse me. Hey, y'all forgot I was live. Man, I know y'all like thinking I'm crazy. Man. Mm. Oh, man. Hey, hey, y'all got to hold on, man. Hey, y'all hold on one minute. Hey, y'all give me a minute. This is crazy. Y'all give me a minute. All right, y'all. Hey, Shalom, Israel, Most High, Christ bless. All right, y'all. Do number 20 to 48. That's going to be the class today. And the, reason, the reason what making me do this class is that uh, somebody going to sit up there and ask and say, hey, give, what's the precept for do number 28 verse 48? I said, man, oh, hell no. You need a precept for do number 28 verse 48? People crazy. But look, y'all, let's stand up, let's face the east, let's send up these prayers. Sisters, make sure your head covered. Brothers, make sure your head uncovered. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. All right, John, we're going to go. We're going to dig up into this dude under 28 today. Uh, verse 48. Uh, so, you know, we leave in camp the other day. And, you know, we're supposed to have these so-called apologies. They said they was going to come. When we came to New Orleans, they was going to be out there. They don't stop us from spreading the gospel. They didn't stop nothing. <laughs> hey, y'all, nobody can't stop this truth. It is what it is. Nobody can stop this truth. So y'all don't even worry about or oh, none of that right there. Ain't nobody can stop the word of God. You know what I'm saying? So um, hold on. Let me let me cut this thing off real quick. Y'all say y'all y'all say y'all can't hear good. The sound bad or what? The sound bad. Is the sound bad? See it keep dropping. I don't know, man. Uh. Probably because I wasn't talking that loud. But uh, they said they were going to still tell us. Basically, they wait till we pack up, we leave, and everything. Then you have this one dude come up to us. Look, we leaving now, y'all. Hey, look, we already been out there five, six hours bringing forth the word of God, teacher repents. Man, we ain't going to be dealing with y'all. So while we're walking off, now look, I'm going to tell you now, y'all probably ain't going to never see me deal with one of them apologists unless I'm blasting. And I'm going to tell you why, no matter what we tell them, they study to try to debate what we say. And all they do is use Christian commentaries. That's it. Now, if y'all type up commentary for Deuteronomy 28 or Deuteronomy or, or, or whatever scripture, you can type up a commentary for it. And a white man will give you his understanding of what he thinks the scriptures is. Now, not only that one, that white man will give you understanding, you got about 50, 60 white men trying to give y'all their understanding of what their scripture is. So what the apologists like to do, they like to sit up there, they like to go to, uh, they like to choose the white man who they think is their best fits, what, uh, their best fits their agenda. That's what they do. You know what I'm saying? They don't do precept upon precept like the most I tell us to do. Matter of fact, go to Isaiah real quick. Isaiah 28. Now, this class is going to be basic, but I'm going to go in deep on do number 28. Because they asked, give a precept for that. And I'm like, what? I got back. I'm like, who need a precept for this? So I got back. I went through the scriptures. I'm like, so if they ever step to me, how would I deal with this? And I'm, I'm going to show you. Just in case somebody stepped to you with that. But give me a precept for do number 28 and 48. Now, right, listen to this. This do not, I mean, this Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. It says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the bed, breast. Who is weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast? A baby. A child. A child. Look, go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Real quick, verse 7. So a child. This was wrong with a lot of people. They don't want to come back as a little child to the most high. You want to keep all this stuff that you learned in the Christian church in your head, and that ain't gonna help us out of this captivity. The Christian church already, the Christian church has failed our people. It is what it is. The Christian church has failed blacks and Hispanics. This uh Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. You hear that? Your children. That's who's going to be able, you got to come back as a child if you want to be able to get understanding. All the stuff you think you know, that you got to be retaught. Remember a child, a child growing up, anything you teach them, they're going to roll with. They only start to question you when they get older. They start to question their teachings. Why? Because people start to corrupt their mind. Their mind start to get corrupted. That's when they want to question what mom and daddy taught them. Well, my friend said this. Or I seen that on TV. They start to question that question the teachers. But as a child, they don't question nothing. Whatever you teach them, they just roll with them. You can tell them the sky is purple and they'll roll with it. Because you can tell them well, that's the color purple up there. And they'll roll with it. That's how a child. So a child can be taught. That's all it's saying. Come back as a child. Why? Because a child can be taught. It's saying, thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. 
and shall talk to them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. What they're talking about? They're talking about the commandments. That's the first principles right there. Um, uh, that, that's the first thing that you're supposed to teach your child is the commandments. Son, don't steal. Son, don't kill. Son, don't lie. Son, don't mess with another man's wife. Them the things that you're supposed to teach him. The commandments. So go right back to Isaiah 28 and 9. Who shall he teach knowledge? And who shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So you got to come back as a child. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, her a little and there a little. A lot of people ask why we jump around. That's why. The scriptures say precept got to be, must be upon precept. So if I want to get the meaning of love, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to 1 John 5 and 3. It's going to say, this is the love of God. Let's get that real quick. Because Christians always like to scream, love, love, love. Okay, what is love? What is love? 1 John 5 and 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. So we don't want your meaning of love. We want God's meaning of love. Just like with sin. Go to 1 John 4 and 3. What is sin? The Bible explains to you what these things is. So when you read a verse in the Bible, say, for all have sinned. Okay, who does sin apply to and what is sin? Go to 1 John 3 and 4. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. You see how God give you his explanation of what these things is. I'm going to tell you another thing. Let's deal with the two great commandments. Well, I'm telling you how people love the two, the two great commandments. You only got to keep two. You only got to keep two. All right, let's get it. Let's go to Matthew 22, verse 35. Matthew 22, verse 35. Let's show you how you get the understanding of the Bible. You got to come back as a child. First, you got to come back as a child. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. That's who God working with. God ain't working with you. You ain't doing commandment number one. And you saying the most I endowed you with all wisdom. Hell no, sit down somewhere. Uh, Matthew chapter 22, verse 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, saying, you heard that? This Pharisee was trying to tempt Christ with the question that he was asking. Being deceitful. It say, saying, Master, which is the great commandment of which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Now, a lot of y'all now remember what love is, first John 5 and 3. Keep the commandments. But I'm gonna show you something. Let's go to I had the precept. It was a precept I pulled for this the other day. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter, let me make sure. Hold on, let me see, let me see. I'm going to get it. I had a cold pre-sale for this. I think, was it Deuteronomy 8? Mm -hmm. Let me see, let me see, y'all. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh, nah, it was, I think it was in Exodus. Hold on. Hey, I need one of the brothers from Tennessee that was in class the other day. I gave y'all a pre sale I gave you a good pre sale one of the brothers for Matthew 22, I mean for Matthew 22 and 35. It was a precept. I can't think of it off the top of my head and I don't got my notes. Uh, let me see, let me see. I think it was a Deuteronomy 26. That's what it was. Hold on, Deuteronomy 26. Hold on, let me look at it. All right, here we go, Deuteronomy 26. So I knew I was going to get it. I'll be trying to shoot off my head. All right, hold on. So remember, 
And the scriptures say, precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. So the first great commandment is the Lord, uh, it said, Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Now you read that in Deuteronomy 6 and 25. You read that, that's why you first read that at. Deuteronomy 6, I mean, Deuteronomy 6, verse 5. Matter of fact, let's read that first. And then I'm going to read something else to you. It says, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. So the first that's the first great commandment, basically to keep the commandments. That's what it is. Jump down real quick to verse 2. I'm going to start at verse 1. It said, now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that you might do them in the land whether ye go to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thou days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily as the Lord thy God, as the Lord God of thy fathers have promised thee, in the land that flowed with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. What words he commanded? What words that he commanded us? That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and commandments which I command thee. That's what he commanded you. And he said, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. So he's telling you, well, how are you going to love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might? Keep the commandments. The words that he commanded you supposed to be on your mind, in your mind. So now let's jump to Deuteronomy chapter 26. And let's start at 16. It say, this day the Lord thy God have commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thy heart and with all thy soul. You see that? <laughs> You're supposed to keep and do the commandments with all your heart and with all your soul. That's how you show the Lord that you love him. It say, thou hast avouched the Lord this day to be thy God. So it was affirmed. You made, uh, you affirmed the Lord that day. That look, hey, to be thy God and to walk in his ways. It was made affirmative that day. You know what I'm saying? And to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and to hearken unto his voice. That's how you show the Lord that you love him with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. To do the commandments. Go back to Deuteronomy 22, verse 38. I mean, Matthew 22, verse 38. It says, this is the first and great commandment. So how do you love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, and with all your mind? Keeping his commandments. Simple as that. That's how you do that. I just gave y'all two precepts. Because the Christian church is saying, love, love, love. Now listen to it. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the prophets. So now, how do I love my neighbor as myself? How do I love my neighbor as myself? Go to Romans real quick. That's why he said, look, precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Okay, Romans chapter 13. Let's start at verse 8. It say, Owe no man anything but to love one another. So when you read in the books of Exodus chapter 21 and 22, believe it or not, when you, the, when you read in the books of Exodus chapter 20, 
chapter 21, chapter 22, and chapter 23, the uh, Moses is teaching you how to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Y'all write it down. When you read those books, like when they say, oh, no man, anything but to love or love one another, he teaches you about theft. He teaches you about damage of property. He teaches you about all types of stuff, showing you how to deal with your neighbor. Treat your neighbor the way you want to be treated. That's this 20, 21, 22, and 23. Write them down and read them when you get time. Verse 9, for this thou shalt not commit a dutch. Now he's going into, hey, look, if, if you love your neighbors, you love yourself, you ain't going to owe them anything, you're going to pay them back. If you love your neighbors, you love yourself, you ain't going to commit adultery with his wife, thou should not kill. You ain't going to kill your neighbor. Thou should not steal. You ain't going to steal from your neighbor. Thou should not burn false witness. You ain't going to burn false witness against your neighbor if you love them as you love yourself. Thou should not covet. You ain't going to covet his possessions if you love him as you love yourself. He say, and if there be any other commandment, now he was like, hey, look, if there's any other commandment, not just these, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He said, all those commandments going to be comprehended in one saying, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You see that? So you got to read the Bible precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Everything can't be answered with just love. Everything can't be answered with just love. Oh, wait, all you got to do is love. That's why you got that Jada Seducer dude making a song now talking about all you got to do is love. What the hell? All we need is love. What, what love, bro? <laughs> what love? All right, there we go with that. So that's just an example of how we use precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Now I ain't going to go too deep today. I'm going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let's start at verse 15. It's going to be a quick class today. I got work to do. Uh, it say, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice. Now, hold on, let me stop real quick. Because it's pitiful when you got our own people coming up against this truth. Now, we was out there. We was leaving. We was marching off. We already did camp for like five hours. We ain't been arguing with these apologists, folks. And, and I know a lot of people like, we want to see a showdown. We want to see. It ain't going to be no showdown. It ain't going to be no battle. They don't know the scriptures. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So we marching off. We go. They run up to us. Your old people, it's Jake. It's Jake the one trying to debunk the curses. It's Jake the one that's trying to debunk us being the children of God. Now, you know, you got to be a real cool. Now, we've been taught that we was nothing all our life. And you got a group of men that arose up on this earth, teaching our people they're the greatest thing they ever walked this planet earth, teaching our brothers to marry our sisters, to stop treating them like hoes, Teaching our sisters to stop acting like hoes, stop dressing like hoes, you know what I'm saying? Showing them they showing them they true worth, you know what I'm saying? And then you got these brothers come from out of nowhere trying to teach us that we ain't nothing again. Uh-uh, man, y'all gotta go. Hell no, the age of the Negro coon is over. It's over for y'all. Look, you ain't finna make me believe that I ain't nothing. <laughs> you can't make me believe that I ain't nothing in this damn time. You got me messed up. For real. And if you got anybody that's trying to come to you and convince you that you ain't nothing, trying to convince you that you a Gentile, even though a lot of you still got that Gentile mindset, but trying to convince you that you ain't nothing, that you ain't great, and that you ain't the most precious thing on this planet Earth, if you got a Negro trying to come teach you that and you believe it, shame on you. Because ain't nobody going to teach me that I ain't nothing. For real. After all the oppression that we have been through, hell no. And we trying to sit up there and tell you you're the greatest thing on the planet Earth? For real. So, don't, hey, if you let somebody convince you that you ain't nothing, shame on you. Shame on you. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass. 
that thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So the Lord said, you don't keep the commandments, all these curses going to come upon you, they're going to overtake you. Now, let's jump down to verse 45. They say, moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So he said, look, these curses that's going to come upon the Israelites for breaking God's commandments, they're going, to be a, they're going to be as a sign upon them. So if you want to identify the children of Israel, these curses are going to be upon them as a sign of who they are. Let's read on. Verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things, therefore shall thy serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger so now this dude asks give me a precept for dude number 28 verse 48. <laughs> i'm going to get y'all a precept i'm going to show you how bug out negroes is the lord said this stuff going to be upon them upon uh, it's going to be a sign upon their seed forever it said therefore shall thou serve thy enemies which the lord shall send against thee in hunger so god said you have to go to your enemies for food in home and in thirst and for something to drink you got to go to your enemies for something to drink and in nakedness for clothing or the material to make your clothing you got to go to your enemies for it because i don't know no i don't know no negroes that make their own cotton that make their uh that they, they know how to take cotton and thread it into a shirt i mean thread it into cloth Y'all don't even got the machines to do it, for real. They get silk and put silk in the form and, and thread it to the point that you make your own fabric. Put it like that. You get cotton and make fabric for that. Get silk and make fabric for that. Get lid and make, I don't know, no Negroes that do that. They know how to process this stuff. I don't know. I don't know. Now, some of y'all might work for some companies that do it, but you don't got the machinery to do it yourself. Now, I know some of y'all, they're not taking yarn, and you get the yarn, and then you do that, and you make different stuff out of yarn. And who put the yarn together for you? Who processed that for you? Your enemies. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. And in one of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Now, these apologists are saying, well, during the time of Nebuchadnezzar, all the nations, uh, the scripture say he put a yoke upon all the nations for them to serve thee, of course. But remember, you got to fit all these curses. You know what I'm saying? Now, you got some people that practice that uh, their sadistic, satanic sexual acts where they'll put a yoke of earth on their neck. On their neck. Does that mean they fit the curses of Deuteronomy 28? Now, listen to me, y'all. You got, I guess they call it Satanus, a uh, Sodom, some stuff. I forgot what they call it. And I don't want to Google it real quick because no telling what the hell might pop up. But you got these people that they practice bondage. Okay, it's called bondage, uh, 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 abundant sex, where they love to be slaves and being yokes of earth and chained up and handcuffed. And they like, they, uh, they want their arms tied around their back and their damn legs tied to their arms. Y'all get what I'm saying, right? So that's because they got a yoke of iron, or an iron upon their neck. Does that mean they fit all the curses of Deuteronomy 28? No. Don't be simple. You got to fit all the curses of Deuteronomy 28. Yeah, S and M. All, oh, damn, you dead. Hey, bro, we got curses. <laughs> huh? Huh? BDSM. BDSM. Hold on. That, damn, Machiel. <laughs> so then, also you did, and also my care, huh? This brother got S and M, and this brother talking about BDSM. See, I ain't know nothing about that, Israel. <laughs> so these brothers, you gotta ask questions. <laughs> okay, all praises. Thanks for helping me out. So, hey, uh, what does S and M mean, officer? You did. Please help us out. <laughs> 
Help us out, bro. <laughs> SNL, help us out. We need help. All right, y'all waiting to get my help. But y'all know what I'm saying, though. All right, what does BDSM mean? Okay, I'll pray. Okay, y'all, BDSM means bondage, dominance, submission, and sadomasochism. That's what it means. So you got some people that practice this stuff right here. They practice this stuff, you know what I'm saying? And it's a given a wide range of practices, some of which may be engaged in by people who do not consider themselves as practicing BDSM, inclusion in the BDSM community or subculture is usually dependent upon self-identification and shared experience. So it's a bondage and discipline. So you got some people, they practice this stuff right here. Does that mean they fit the curses of Deuteronomy 28? <laughs> Because they put a yoke around upon their neck and have sex. Hell no. <laughs> All right, y'all. So now, so what's the precept for that? Listen to this, Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send it against thee. Jump down to verse 49. The Lord will bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle fly. A nation whose tongue thou should not understand. That's what our precept do number 28 uh, with. Do number 28 verse 48 with. Our precept with 49. The Lord said he's going to send a nation against thee from the end of the earth as swift as the eagle fly. Now let's go to Daniel real quick. Chapter 7. Now even Christians know, even these so-called Christians or these so-called apologists know in Daniel 7 who these kingdoms is that the Lord is talking about. I mean, that Daniel, these kingdom, these these four beasts that's in Daniel vision, even they know who these four beasts is. Now look, y'all, I'm going I'm to jump. I'm going to start at verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream, and visions of, of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the psalm of the mouse. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea and four great beasts came up from the sea that was from one another now these four great beasts is talking about four great empires they say the first was like a lion and has eagle had eagle wings let's talk about babylon now when you read in daniel's let me see when you read in daniel's four it said he had a head of gold you know what I'm saying? It was talking about Babylon had the head of gold. I think that was Daniel's fault. Let me look at it real quick just to make sure. I mean, Daniel's 2. Jump over real quick to Daniel's 2, verse 38. It's saying, and whatsoever the children of the men dwell, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the heaven have he given into thy hand and have made thee ruler over them. Thou art the head of gold. So it's talking about uh, the, uh, Babylon, 605 BC. So now I'm going to deal with uh, this lion. Let's go right back to Daniel chapter 7, verse 1. The first was like a lion. Let's go to Jeremiah 4 and 6. I'm going to run through it. I ain't gonna, I want to break down all this. That's why I'm going fast, Israel. Now, Bishop got plenty of classes about this. It say. Set up standards toward Zion. Retire, stay not, for I will bring evil from the north and great destruction. The lion is come up from his thicket, and the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. He has gone forth from his place to make the land desolate, and thy city shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. So this lion represents the king of Babylon. That's what it's talking about. It's talking about the king of Babylon or represents Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. You know what I'm saying? Now, look, let's go right back. It say the first was like a lion and had eagle wings. Now, go to Ezekiel 17, 1, 2, 3. Ezekiel 17, 1, 2, 3. So 
So the line represents Babylon. Ezekiel 17, verse 1. It said, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, put forth a riddle, and speak a parable unto the house of Israel, and say, Thus said the Lord God, a great eagle with great wings, a long wing, full of feathers, which had divers color, came unto Lebanon, and took the highest branch of cedar. So the eagle wing, the branches of cedar, talking about the kings and the princes. Jump down to verse 12. Say now to the rebellious house, know ye not what these things mean? Tell them, behold, the king of Babylon is come to Jerusalem and have taken the king thereof and the princes thereof and led them with him to Babylon. So that lion with eagle wings is talking about Babylon, talking about Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians. That's what it's talking about. Now, look, let's read on. Let's go right back to Daniel 7, verse 4. The first was like a lion and had eagle wings. I beheld till the wings whereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made and made stand upon the feet as a great as a man. And man's heart was given to it, talking about great wisdom. And behold, another beast, a second like a bird. Now this talking about the Persian Me Empire. Remember, it had the uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I think it had the the silver. Yeah, it had it had the uh, breast and the arms of silver. Remember, it had the breast and the arms of silver when he seen that statue. The breast and arms of silver. Now go right back to where we was at. And another, and behold, another beast, a second like a bird, and it raised up itself on one side now when it raised up itself on one time it's talking about the Persians. you know what i'm saying it's saying when it's talking about cyrus the purge cyrus the purge because remember they was ruling first and it raised up itself on one side and it had three ribs now the three ribs talking about the three nations that it overcame you can read about that in isaiah 45 1 through 3 and isaiah 45 verse 14 you know what i'm saying now let's read on. And in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it, and they said, Thus unto it, arise the vile much flesh. So the Persian Medes came together and they conquered Babylon. After this, I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard. So remember, you read about that in Daniel 2, when it's talking about, uh, and his belly and his thighs of brass. That represents the brass. That's talking about the Greek Empire, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl the beast had also four heads and dominion was given to him so this talking about the four generals four wings uh this time i mean this time about his four generals and that was uh lysimachus uh lysander ptolemy and uh who who else i'm missing lysimachus ptolemy um uh, Antiochus, and uh, it was somebody I just said. Who else I just said? Yeah, Lysimachus, Ptolemy, Cassandra, and uh, who else I just said? We just said it. Yeah, Seleucus. In Seleucus, because Antiochus come out of Seleucus. All yeah. oh, praises. Thank you, Alan. In Seleucus. All right, where we at? All right, verse 7. Daniel 7 and 7. After this, I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible. So the fourth beast represents Rome and America. And remember Daniel 2, it said his feet, I mean his legs of urn, his feet part of urn and part of clay. And, and it's talking about Rome, 63 BC. And remember America came into power in 1776 AD. Now, it's saying, and this, uh, Daniel 77. So now, this is what I'm basing this on. I went through this. Remember, Deuteronomy 28, 48. And it said, uh, verse 49, and it tells you, hold on, let's read Deuteronomy 28 and 49 again for our butchery. 
So remember I told y'all, the precept of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48, will be 49. Thou shalt serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. Verse 49, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle fly, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Deuteronomy 28, verse 49. So now, verse, let's go back to Daniel 7 and 7. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible. Now notice, this fourth beast, it didn't give, it didn't say it was like a bear. It didn't say it was like a leopard, or it didn't say it was like a lion that had eagle wings. It don't tell, it don't describe, he don't describe this fourth beast right here. It said, and this, and after this, I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong and seated, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and breaking pieces and stamped, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and was divers from all the beasts that were before it, and had ten horns. So he said this right here, this beast was different from all the beasts that was before it. It's saying, now the ten horns represents the ten common markers of the EU. I considered the horns and beheld. Behold, there came up another, there came up among them a little horn. The little horn is talking about America, before whom there was three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Because in order for America to become the United States of America, they had to pluck up France, Spain, and Great Britain. Now remember, roll symbol was the eagle. <laughs> Great Britain symbol was the eagle. Spain symbol was the eagle. France symbol was the eagle. And America symbol is the eagle. It's a plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man and a mouth speaking great things. It's going into blasphemies. Now, go to 2nd Ezra chapter 12 real quick, verse 10. Second Henry chapter 12, verse 10. And he said unto me, this is the interpretation of the vision. The eagle whom thou sawest come up from the sea is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. You hear that? <laughs> he said, look, this is the vision that he seen in the brother Daniel. Now jump over real quick to Second Henry chapter 11, verse 39. It's saying, I'm going to start at 40. And the fourth came. So what? The fourth what? This is talking about the fourth beast. The fourth beast that you read about. The fourth beast that you read about in Daniel 7. It's saying the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were past and had power over the world with great fearfulness. And over the whole compass of the earth with much wicked oppression. And so long dwelt he upon the earth with the sea. Now, this fourth beast, let's jump over again. The day is tw I mean, second is 12, verse 11. Now, it's talking about Rome and America, because America is a extension of Rome. It's still in power today. That's why they got the Roman Catholic Church set up. They got a TV show called Rome. Rome is a extension of America. Or America is a extension of Rome. Let's read this. Second Andrew chapter 12, verse 11. The eagle whom thou sawest come up from the sea is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. That's Daniel 77. For it was not expounded to him. Therefore, now I declare it unto thee. Behold, the days come. The days will come that there will rise up a kingdom upon earth, and it shall be feared above all the kingdoms that were before it. That's talking about uh that's talking about America. That's talking about America. So now go right back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 49. I mean 48. It 
It say, therefore shall thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. The Lord said, you have to go to your enemies for food and in thirst. You have to go to them for warmth and in nakedness. You got to go to them for clothes and in one of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee. So this enemy that the Lord going to send against you, that you got to serve for food, wine, and clothes, and one of all things that's going to put a yoke of iron upon your neck. He said, I'm going to bring a nation against thee from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle fly, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. So when we were dwelling on the west coast of Africa, the great the Brins came against us. They symbol was the eagle. The Spanish came against us. They symbol was the eagle. The Portuguese came against us. Their symbol was the eagle. The French came against us. They symbol was the eagle. And guess what? The Americans, America. What symbol is the American not? The eagle. And what we do? We got to go to go to them for what? And want of all things. Now, I want to show y'all something. Matter of fact, and when they came against us, what they do? They put yokes of iron upon thy neck. All these, all of them, all of them, France, Great Britain, Spain, Portugal, America, all of them put yokes of iron upon thy neck. And who is their leader? Esau. We'll go to Daniels real quick. Chapter 2, verse 42. I mean, start at 40. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. It's talking about Rome going into 20, 63 BC. It said, For as much as iron breaking in pieces and subduing all things, and as iron that breaketh all things, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of pot is clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in it the strength of the urn. For as much as thou sawest the urn mixed with the miry clay, and as the toes of the feet were part of urn and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly broken and, I mean, partly strong and partly broken. Let's talk about America. Why? America partly strong and partly broken. How is it broken? Look at it. You got your Democrat, you got your Republicans, hell, you got your. National, you got your white nationalist groups. Then you got groups like Antifa, white people that go out and fight against these white nationalist group, groups. It's partly broken. You got all religions here. You got Christianity. You got Buddhism. Uh, you got uh, Islam. You got all religions here. So it's partly strong, partly broken. It's saying, whereas thou sawest urn mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. You got all nations here. You got all nations here. So that's the seed of men, mingling themselves with the seed of men. All nations here in America. But they shall not cleave one to another. All nations here and everybody ain't cleaving one to another. Even as urn is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So it's letting you know, in the days of these kingdoms, just like now, in the day of, um, in, in America right now, what you see going on? <laughs> what you see going on? You see the Israelites rising up. You see the Israelites rising up in America. That's where it's starting at, right here. And you see us going from America all over the earth, teaching up, teaching our people repentance, to wake up, to keep the commandments of God. You see the Lord sitting up here starting to establish his kingdom on earth versus being established through us waking up and teaching his commandments. You know what I'm saying? Now, it's letting you know in the days of these kings, God going to start to set up his kingdom on earth. And it's happening now. It started happening when? In Rome. When Christ returned. Made, when, I mean, when Christ came and started to teach our people repentance and die for their sin. You know what I'm saying? Then our people went into slavery. Now we're waking up. Now we repent. 
Now the prophet's back, teaching the commandments of God. You know what I'm saying? So what was that? Verse 45. For as much as thou sawest the stone, now this stone is talking about Christ, was cut out of the mount with our hands, and that it break in pieces the earth, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God have made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is served, and the interpret interpretation thereof is sure. So you hear that said the dream is served. They can't stop the prophecy. So the last kingdom that's going to be ruling on the planet Earth is Esau kingdom. He represents that eagle. That goes into 2nd Andrew 6 now. 2nd Andrew chapter 6. 2nd Andrew chapter 6. Verse 9. It says, For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. So that shows you right there. It says, Christ goes in the, in the, uh, it say in the in the days of these kings shall Christ start to set up his kingdom. Jacob kingdom is right behind Esau. So that eagle that you got, a, I mean that nation that was sent against you, a swift as the eagle flight, that you got to serve and want of all things. And not only them, we had to serve the Persian Medes and want of all things. We had to serve the Babylonians. Remember, said they're gonna be upon your seed forever. So our precept of Deuteronomy 28 and 48. With Deuteronomy, I mean, with Deuteronomy 28, verse 49, that eagle, you know what I'm saying, that last kingdom on the planet Earth. And now the Lord starting to set up his king. The scriptures say Jacob is the end of the world. I mean, Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning that followed. You know what I'm saying? Esau is the end of the world. Esau is the last kingdom ruler on the planet Earth before Christ come back. So, hey, look, I'm going to end it right there. Y'all got any questions? I hope y'all got some understanding out of this. Uh, nah, they just uh, put the scriptures up there. Let me go back over and listen to it. Okay, y'all got any questions? So the fourth kingdom, the fourth beast is the ego. And Edom represents their ego, ego. Okay, y'all, if y'all don't got no questions, I'm going to get ready and shut it down. We got to discuss some stuff for the men's conference. One of the brothers just made it up here. So don't let these apologies fool y'all. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. I mean, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48 and 49. The eagle that the Lord sent against us, that happened. Were well, the nations worn for the potions of the Israelites? I, I don't understand your question, sis or brother. I don't know this sister or brother. I don't understand your question. Hey, look, hey, if y'all come to the man's conference, y'all better have y'all rooms booked today. Because after the day, y'all gonna have to pay full cost. Full cost for the rooms. And I don't know how much they is. But we got the group rate, and I think the group rate is a pretty decent, decent price for the rooms we're gonna be staying in. And I, I'd rather have all of us men in the same hotel. Because we're gonna be downtown.
If we just go back to the beginning of class where I breed, and we just went over that. Got to follow the Ten Commandments. All the commandments fall up under that. You got to follow the dietary laws. You got to keep the feast days and the high holy days. The most I got a dress code for us. Yeah, soldiers and on up. Right now, I ain't letting no more members sign up. Right now, unless, right now, uh, what I got to do, we got to sit up there. Cause we had 700 brothers signed up and I think like 400 paid. 700 signed up, 400 paid. So we can hold 700 in the building. So like what I'm gonna do before I open registration back up for the Brothers for Men's Conference, I'm gonna get a list of everybody that it paid so far. And then it's going down. Then I open back up for a little minute. All right, hold on, y'all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, he got another prep, uh, pre sale for do number 28 and 48 that Bishop put. Go to Psalms 107, 10 through 12. Psalms 107, 10 through 12. And this is for the yoke of iron. This is for the yoke of iron. It says, Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron. Because they rebel against the words of God. So who the word of God was given to? The word of God was given to the Israelites and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore, he brought, the, he brought down their heart with labor. So what? What is the labor they had to do? They're slave labor. They're slave work, working in the fields. They fell down and there was none to help them. There was none to save them. There was none to save them. So that's another precept for Deuteronomy 28, verse 48, Yoke of Burns. I don't know if I'm going to open up the registration today, back today. I don't know, because y'all just don't understand, man. It's a lot of work. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of work going through, trying to make sure who all paid, who registered. Some of y'all, when y'all signed up, you didn't put you didn't put your government name down. Some of y'all, when you sent your fee in, you sent it from your wife's, uh, from your wife PayPal. Like we know who your wife is. You didn't put, she didn't put your name down. Just put men's conference. Out of order as hell. When we gave specific orders on how to do certain stuff, and then if you didn't understand the script, you could have got counsel, you know. But look, I'm gonna let y'all go, man. We gotta handle this alone. Most high Christ bless. I want to give dumb honors to the bishops, Ed and Nathan, Yet and Kanai. I want to give honors to the deacons, the officers. I mean, the deacons, the captains, the officers, the soldiers, all y'all brothers and sisters that's here pushing this truth. Shalom, Messiah Christ, bless.